Take the place of the police? Martha contacted them a number of times, to no result. Perhaps they didn't take her seriously. We should call back to explain the situation calmly. The police, once again, didn't do their job. Call them, and you'll see. That would seem to be the most reasonable course, if you don't have any objection. Go right ahead. The telephone is in the next room. When you realize the ineffectiveness of the police, come back to see me. So now we're gonna call the police and see what they have to say about it, because we clearly can't trust this guy, this guy, because, yeah, let's check this uh, cool one here. Okay, let's go back and actually phone. I can't borrow, I can't borrow this without permission. I belong to the Sacred Congregation of Rights. I've come to Vladiviste to investigate the case of Martha Caligaro in view of her eventual canonization. Martha Caligaro? I remember her well. Always flattering my men with unbelievable stories and groundless complaints. She wasn't a bad woman, but she had a screw loose. I'll note your opinion. Inspector, I'm calling because my investigation has revealed several suspicious deaths, which all occurred in Vladoviste. They could very well be murders. Nah, give me the names of the supposed victims. Marion Marescu, dead in October 1913, Seldrick Maliskal in July 1916, and an unidentified young girl who died in November 1919. I see exactly what you're talking about. Wasn't it a certain Stefan Luca who transmitted this information to you? Well, that is... Ah, of course it's him. Don't believe anything he tells you. He's just been fired by his newspaper. He's just a troublemaker. Father Moriani, I have to warn you. Our country is currently in the grip of a certain agitation. And the Catholic minority isn't viewed very positively by certain political groups. So, if I were in your shoes, I wouldn't prolong my visit to Transylvania. Thank you for your advice, but you understand that I can't leave without carrying out my mission. Goodbye, Inspector. The police think that Martha was mad. Her case doesn't look good. But it's out of the question for me to close the file without digging deeper. Let's go back to the journalist to question him. So we learned that uh, the police thinks that Martha was clearly mad, more or less. And this guy is a liar and whatnot. So let's go back and question him again. Good. Did you call the police? Are you convinced that they won't do a thing? Then we can go on to serious matters. Read these two letters and tell me what you think of them. I will read this after... I need something to eat now, so... I will fix that real quick. Seems too high. Vampires, hosts, my lord, I must elucidate this sorry affair. Let's subject Stefan Luca to some methodical questioning.
So let's see here. Uh, so your article was reacted. Thank you for your courage attempt. I see now that we must find a different solution. I will speak to you about it in person. To answer your question, please know that I was never interested in Vampire Legends prior to my arrival in Vladovista. When little Seldrick was at his worst, it was our friend G who helped me implant, implement the traditional message, the garlic and the protective circle. I noticed an improvement until that fateful night when I found the window open, the crumbs of hose, this this pear said or something <laughs> by the wind and the child dead in his bed. How could I after that harbor the slightest doubt about the enemy we are fighting? Best wishes, Martha. So I guess you guys have read this. Um, by now. So I can put it to rest. This G character must be the priest. Who is... His name is... What was his name? Father G... Let's see what his name is. Father Gregorio Nicesco, yeah. So it's him who is called G. So let's get back here. The letters you showed me raise a lot of questions. First of all, what exactly does the term vampire signify? Vampire? Vampire? Upir, Upir, Rukalakas for the Greeks, do these words really evoke nothing for you? To tell you the truth, they do. I seem to recall reading something about these, um, creatures. So, if I understand right, Martha tried to drive them back with a communion host, ground into a powder? That's right, with the crumbs from the host. She drew a protective circle. Tell me, was the host consecrated? Uh... I suppose so. Did Father Gregorio know that this sort of activity was going on in his parish? The best would be for you to ask him the question. So now we got told that we should ask the priest in matter if he was in on it or not. Green leaf rest home, the day. Could I speak to Father Gregorio Nijescu, please? This is Father Arno Moriani. One moment, I'll see. This is Father Gregorio Nijescu. Hello, this is Father Arno Moriani. Father, I have to discuss a very delicate subject with you. Please, answer my questions very precisely. It's important. Do you know Stefan Luca? He's a journalist. A friend of Martha's. They developed photographs together. According to Stefan Luca, Martha Caligaro believed in vampires and engaged in strange rituals. It's true. And before you ask the question, yes, I helped her. You do know the position of the church on this subject, don't you? I know it. And I don't doubt that it's a very reasonable position when you think about the question seated in an office in Rome. But in Vladoviste, the situation is different. Do you want me to tell you how things happened? Martha spoke to me of it. It's a sort of a cursed way of the cross, which leads to the source of evil. She embarked upon it against my advice. I wanted to protect her. Oh, I was wrong. Why is that? She died fighting. I fled. 
Today, it is she who has the good part. It's very likely. I knew she was threatened. I'd offered her a dog to protect her. Now that seems to me to have been laughable. As if a dog could have stopped the enemy she was confronting. Do you think that enemy was a vampire? A supernatural creature? An emanation of the devil. If you'd lived a few years in Vladoviste, you wouldn't doubt it. Unfortunately not. Two nights later, the window opened mysteriously, and the wind blew away the protective circle. Martha found the child dead, with wounds on his neck. Thank you for your frankness, Father. Of course, you realize that after your revelations, Martha will never be canonized. Yes, of course. Uh, what does it matter if she rests in peace? Another thing. If a direct question is asked, I shall be forced to evoke your part in this business. So be it. But you should know that my only regret is not to have helped Martha more. In the end, I slipped away. It was cowardly of me. The Lord is our only judge. I have no wish to condemn you. <laughs>